Welcome to ACT OUT, I'm Eleanor Goldfield and this is your Tipping Point. The vast majority of human beings on this planet want to do good. That's not really news. If given the chance, we'd opt for peace, enough food to eat, clean air, and fewer assholes. That's why a lot of us feel good about giving to charity groups and nonprofit organizations, particularly if we can do so from a cute little DIY hipster jar like that. We feel that in some small way we're doing our part, that our money can be our action, that our dollars will go to those actually doing something so that we don't have to. Okay, you're getting the point that I don't think donating to charity is enough, and no, I don't. If all you do is donate money to charity, step it up, people. This world isn't going to be saved by throwing a few dimes in an envelope marking it the good guys and going about your day. But outside of this issue of activism light, there are other reasons why we should question the gift of giving. For example, where does the money that you give go? Does it really go to research or to that panda or to the poor and hungry? And we, with regards to large foundations, are they just tax havens for their founders? Opportunities for the rich to look like philanthropes when they're really just not? Like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, founder and CEO of Facebook, who recently announced that he'd be giving away 99% of his Facebook shares to charity. God, that sounds great. But what does that really mean? Well, as Lindsay McGoey, author of No Such Thing as a Free Gift, explains, through setting up an LLC, Zuckerberg has skirted any requirements to publicly list any grants made to either for-profits or non-profits. His giving can take place in total secrecy. Zuckerberg can legally offer the bulk of his philanthropy to any for-profit recipients he wants and still receive public acclaim for gifting his fortune. We're seeing the rise of a new horizontal philanthropy, the rich giving directly to the rich at a level that's completely unprecedented. In other words, Zuckerberg is not obligated to ensure that his charitable giving actually goes to charity. And McGoey says this is nothing unusual. In the United States, study after study has shown that less than a third of all charitable giving from foundations and individuals is geared towards people who are living in situations of extreme economic need. Inequality is fueling the current philanthropic surge, but far too few people are examining whether this solution is actually making a difference to inequality levels or simply entrenching existing wealth gaps. For example, the Bill Gates Foundation can give millions to MasterCard, yeah, the credit card company, claiming that the gift is in line with their charitable mandate. And that's that. There's no uh, follow-up. There's no insurance that the money given to MasterCard will go to something useful, other than, say, those fucking priceless billboards. And of course, the irony here is that this sort of parallel giving is only made possible by a system that creates wealth like this a system that creates a powerful 1% that then overtakes the role of government in supposedly supplying aid to the needy. So we're subsidizing big corporations and foundations instead of the poor who really need the subsidizing, trusting that the big foundations will pick up the slack, owing and eyeing when we hear that they did, and never questioning why the fuck we give money to the rich to give to the poor instead of just cutting out the middleman altogether. Now. All of that being said, I'd be 100% full of shit if I didn't admit that there are some incredibly badass nonprofits out there. And furthermore, yes, due to our current political and economic situation, it's clear that we do need some of these nonprofits. There are fuck tons of nonprofits, not all of them are in it to evade taxes and throw money at their rich friends. The idea of giving is still a good one. The idea of helping others is still a good one. As with many other issues, this one has nuance. It's not perfectly black and white. Of course, nonprofits aren't all bad, but they're not all good, and that is something we have to admit and look into further. And in the name of digging deeper, I spoke with creative activist and nonprofit connoisseur, if you will, Anna Kaminsky. She offers up a first person perspective of the nonprofit industry, the questions that we need to ask, and the shades of gray that we need to notice. Take a look. So I've worked in nonprofits for like seven or eight years. I've done work in prison abolition organizations. I've done work with international aid organizations. I've done work with anti-war organizations and homeless services, pretty much across the gamut. Um, every experience was uh, led to a certain level of frustration um, for me. And that, for me, while frustrating, I, I gleaned a lot of 
um, important insights about the nonprofit world from each organization I worked with. As a millennial, and I think most millennials are this way, we have a tendency to look very deeply into issues, especially millennials that are working in the nonprofit industry. They really have a deep understanding or gain one rather quickly because of both self-reflection and organizational reflection about funding structures of organizations. Um, so they see really quickly that there is a lot of mission drift within organizations, which means that corporate funders or foundational funders um, can very easily co-opt an organization's mission, which leads an organization then to be responsible to funders instead of the clients that they're trying to serve. What do you think about philanthro-capitalists, as they call them, um, that have supreme faith in this capitalist system and are therefore, their giving is based on the premise of market expansion and it's not actually going to solve the ultimate problem of poverty and disease, which is this forever extractive system of capitalism. Well, I guess I don't see it as so black and white. Um, I don't see philanthropic capitalists. Of course, I really understand that um, people like the Gates Found the Gates Foundation, for instance, or the Carter Foundation, or the Rock or the Rockefellers. Um, I don't think they are all bad. Um, I want to think they're all bad, but I know that we can't simply reduce it to that, that they're only after, that they're only after their own self-interest um, in donating money or time. Um, they, do, they do a lot of good things, and nonprofits do a lot of good things. The larger issue is what the organizations are doing with the, what the organizations are doing with the funding um, that they're receiving, or rather what they're allowing the found what amount of input they're allowing these foundations to have on what they're doing. Um, so if, for instance, the Ford Foundation, I mentioned to you earlier that Laura Poitras receives money from the Ford Foundation. Um, so did an organization called Insight, which is sort of a radical organization founded by women of color, for women of color. Um, and they've done a lot of work exploring what the nonprofit industrial complex means. They received, I think it was like a $100,000 grant from the Ford Foundation that was then revoked because of their position on Palestine. Um, so I think these groups and individuals need to be very careful with whom they're receiving funding from and really need to take a stand against them when they're trying to exert power over an organization's mission statement. People within those organizations need to be cognizant of this issue. Um, there's not enough research or there's not much research on what the nonprofit industrial complex looks like. Either academic research, um, it's rarely studied in universities, rarely taught in universities. Um, it's also just not talked about in organizations themselves um, because it requires an amount of time and self-reflection that most um, nonprofit workers just don't have. Um, secondly, I guess I would say um, for people that are donating, you really need to be careful with whom you're donating your money to um, and make sure that you they're an organization that you can trust and one that stays true to their mission. Just because someone gets money from the Ford Foundation or from the Gates Foundation doesn't mean they're bad. It's about what level of influence that organization or that foundation has over the, person, the project. Um, like I said, the Ford Foundation funded citizen four. So that's important to, that's really important to remember, um, that it's, it's a very nuanced kind of argument. Um, something to always be thinking about is that a lot of services that nonprofits do provide, at least in the United States and globally for that matter, um, are services that states should be providing in my, in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion. Um, but because the need is so high, it's also unlikely that states are going to be able to do that. We need free clinics right now in the United States. We need organizations that are providing um, case management to homeless individuals that are in need that have lost their homes because of the housing crisis. Um, we need students who don't have access to free and reduced lunch on Saturdays and in the summers to be sent home with groceries. Um, and those are all things that really good things that nonprofits do. Um, I think it is going to expand, but I also think that the funding structures are going to have to change and that people who do donate 
are going to have to change how they donate um, and what the whole conversation around giving to charity, giving to nonprofits looks like. And give me an example of, of, of that. Um, I think, for instance, right now, organizations are highly reliant on foundational funding, which I've mentioned. But I think if organizations really choose to take the time to be self-reflective, you can develop alternative models of funding. It's harder, um, but you can stay more true to your mission that way. Um, and you're not responsible to big donors that are writing you, you know, thousand dollar checks or higher. You're responsible to small donors. It's the same thing that the Sanders campaign is doing. It's really about. Right. I was, I was going to say there seems to be a parallel between like the money and politics issue. Uh, uh, same with the nonprofit money, money and nonprofit issue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Um, it's all about control and systems of power, ultimately. Um, and it's just about finding the best way to subvert that while also participating in it. Um, because like I said, organizations do good things. Um, but reevaluation and self-reflection is key just as in politics, just as in any, any field. So there you have it. Talk that shit out. Do your research. Just as we mentioned last week, adapt smart. And when it comes to nonprofits, donate smart. And again, don't just use a charity as your checked box for activism. Nothing can replace getting out there and doing something. <laughs>